had a hunch it was going to be one of those days when I might as well have stood in bed. The kind of a day when the telephone doesn't ring and there's nothing but bills and advertisements in the mail. But I was only half right. The telephone didn't ring, but the mail contained something besides bills and advertisements. The envelope was soiled and smudged and smelled of lubricating oil. My name and address had been printed with a pencil. The letter had been mailed in Manhattan the night before, but there was no return address. The bills were fifties. There were six of them. Three hundred bucks. The note had been printed in a small, shaky hand. It read, find out what happened to a man named Joe Case, and you'll get two hundred dollars more. Joe Case worked for the Barlow Parking Lots Company. He disappeared two days ago. The note was unsigned. I didn't know anyone named Joe Case, but I did know Agnes Barlow, the owner of the Barlow Parking Lots. She operated about ten lots around Manhattan, the Bronx, and over in Queens. Her office was in a small midtown garage on East End Avenue. Agnes Barlow was known to most people as Babe. She got the name years ago when a gang of hoodlums tried to organize the parking lot owners around town. Mike Hammer. Grind my gears, babe. How are you? Where have you been keeping yourself? Oh, I've been around, babe. I've been around. You're looking good, Mike. Real good. Well, and you're looking just as licentious as... Uh, <laughs> you've always been my favorite liar. Tell me, tell me. You've been beating anybody over the head with this recently? No, no. I only keep it around to remind me of the old days. Times have changed, Mike. No excitement anymore. None at all, huh? None at all. You sound as though you got something on your mind. Yeah. A guy who worked for you. Or did. Uh... A man named Joe Case. What about him? Now he's disappeared. But didn't you know? All I know is he stopped coming to work a couple of days ago. Uh -huh. Why are you interested in Joe Case? Well, here, I got this letter. Here. You sure this isn't a gag? <laughs> if it is, he's got a pretty expensive sense of humor. Tell me, can you give me this Joe Case's address? You can keep that. What lot does Case work at, babe? Lot number nine up in the Bronx. Jerome Avenue out by Yankee Stadium. Mm-hmm. Okay, babe, thanks a lot. Sorry, I can't be of any more help. Yeah. Mom, I... Well, I need some help on these accounts, but I can come back later if you're busy. Roy, this is Mike Hammer. Mike, this is my son, Roy. Well, how do you do? Hi, how are you? My goodness. Mike, Roy's part of the business now. Sort of a partner. Is that a fact? Good. Mike's been asking me about Joe Case. Seems he's missing. Yeah, I, I thought you might know something about him. All I know is he hadn't checked in the past couple days. Roy wouldn't know any more about Joe Case than I do, Mike. Well, it was good seeing you again. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Gotta find out where to file these accounts now. Joe Case lived in an apartment house not far from where he worked. I contacted the apartment house manager and told him who I was and what I wanted. I'd expected that a look at Case's apartment would cost me about five bucks. The manager expected it would cost me 15. We split the difference. The apartment was a one room and bath affair. It was small, untidy, and unrevealing. closet door. 
As a parking lot attendant, Joe Case didn't make over a buck fifty an hour, plus whatever tips he got on the side. But a guy doesn't support the kind of wardrobe he had on that sort of income. So how did he do it? I didn't know, and the apartment didn't tell me. He didn't tell me much of anything. The room was full of questions, but the answers were somewhere else. for the day. One of the keys I'd found in Joe Case's apartment opened the padlock. fitted the lock to the shack. I didn't know much about the parking lot business, but I knew enough to wonder why there were two sets of claim checks with the same serial number. look funny to you? They both have the same serial number. Yeah, that's right. There was a whole stack of these duplicate claim checks down at the shack. Blackie and his pal made off with them. Incidentally, does that name Blackie mean anything to you? No. You're sure of that, babe? Now look, Hammer, I'm not exactly in love with your attitude. I don't recognize the description of the two sluggers. And I don't know why they would have jumped you. Well, I think I do. See, let's suppose, let's, let's just suppose that uh, you're a customer and I'm Joe Case. Now, you come in to park your car and I take one of these claim checks and stamp the time on it, right? Let's say, uh, let's say the time's 8.15, okay? Now, 8.15. And I tear half of it away and give half to you and you drive off, right? Now, I then take out the duplicate claim check and mark the same time on it, 8.15, and put it away. Now, let's say an hour goes by and you don't show up for your car. I then take the duplicate claim check out and stamp it 9.15 and put it away again. Now, let's say two more hours goes by before you come in for your car. Now, that makes it uh, 11.15, three hours. Now, you pay for the first hour one dollar and for each hour thereafter 70 cents, making a grand total of two dollars and forty cents that you owe me. Now, you give me your stub, I stamp it 11.15, you pay me $2.40, and you leave. Now, now here's the gimmick. After you leave, I take your stub, the one marked 11.15, and I tear it up and throw it away, along with my stub that I marked 11.15, and take out the duplicate stub, the one marked 9.15. Now, instead of putting the $2.40 that you paid me into the till, I put $1 for the one hour marked on this stub. The other dollar and 40 cents I put into my pocket for the last two hours of parking. So that's why business has been off. Off how much? 2,300 in the last six months. At lot nine alone? 
What about the other lots? Have they been off too? No. That's not true, babe. How do you know? Because Joe Case wouldn't have disappeared and those two goons wouldn't have beat up on me if this had been a small operation limited to Lot 9. No, no, this is bigger than just Joe Case and only Lot 9. You don't know what you're talking about. Come in. Mrs. Barlow? Yes? I'm Detective Sergeant Giles of the Nassau County Sheriff's Office. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you about a man that I believe worked for you. We have tentatively identified him as a man named Joe Case. Yeah? What about him? Well, he's dead. His body was discovered yesterday alongside the Long Island Railroad track near Garden City. At first, we thought he'd been walking along the tracks at night, was hit by a train. But he wasn't, eh? Well, he'd been run over by a train, all right. Sometime night before last, but he was dead at the time. The autopsy showed that he'd been beaten to death. Beaten to death? By several blows on the head with a heavy, blunt instrument. I let Babe do the talking. I wasn't sure why I didn't tell what I knew. Maybe it was because I knew too much. And I'm the kind of a guy who likes to be sure that all the lyrics have been written before I start to sing. Then you don't know anything else about Case's disappearance other than the fact he just didn't show up for work yesterday morning. No, that's all. Well, thank you, Mrs. Barlow. And thank you for this. I'm sorry if I bothered you. That's okay. Oh, well, by the way, that's quite a paperweight you have there. Got another one of those? Why didn't you talk, Mike? Because I was too busy wondering why you didn't want me to. I didn't stop you. You didn't help me. Now, you listen to me, babe, and hear me good, because it's the only time I'm going to say it. You know about the racket that Joe Case was working with those duplicate claim checks? You had to. You're too smart a businesswoman not to. All right, Mike. I'll tell you. You were right. Everything that Joe Case was pulling on lot nine was going on on all the other lots. But why didn't you put a stop to it? Because I started it. You... I... I don't get it. What do you mean? You, you, you were stealing from yourself? Not from myself, from Uncle Sam and the city and the state. I pay taxes only on the income reflected by the claim checks. If someone pays for two hours parking and we can run in a duplicate check showing only one hour, the money on the second hour is tax free. Of course, it wasn't only all gravy on my part. I had to cut in Joe Case and all the guys on the other lots. How does all this tie in with Joe Case getting himself killed? I don't know. Come on now, babe. I've told you everything I know, Mike. Everything. Okay. Okay, babe, but I'm going out to Mineola tomorrow and talk to Sergeant Giles of the Nassau Sheriff's Office. Go ahead. I have nothing to hide. You could have fooled me. I'm in the clear as far as taxes are concerned, if that's what you mean. Yeah, how do you figure that? Because this dodge I have been trying has only been going on for the last six months. I haven't filed any false returns yet. Bully for you. I knew I still hadn't got the truth from Babe. The tax dodge wasn't her cup of tea. If Babe needed money, she would have gone in for something with a bigger payoff, less risk, and no kickback to others. I drove back to my office, planning to put my feet up on my desk and do some thinking. Five grand the piece, babe. Blackie and I couldn't do it for a cent less. You understand how it is. I mean, like pulling up stakes, settling in a new town, starting a new business. All right, Pate, all right. I like my dough in cash. I'm sure Blackie would, too. You'll get it in cash. I'll go to the bank first thing in the morning. Are you still on lot six? It's my office. Lot number six, Avenue of the Americas. I'll bring it up to you in the morning, and I want you to get out of town right away. Sure. It was another
message from my anonymous client. The men who jumped you today are Carl Pate and Blackie Davis. They work for the babe. Pate lives at the Bannister Hotel on West 47th Street. The note hadn't been mailed. My client had apparently delivered it personally. But Carl Pate and Blackie Davis were gonna have to wait. There was somebody else I wanted to see first. My client. He wasn't anonymous anymore. His second note told me who he was. If you're looking for babe, she ain't in now. Well, it's not the babe that I'm looking for now, old-timer. It's you. Me? Well, what do you want with me? Well, this. What's that? I haven't got time to play games, old-timer. Outside of Carl Pate, Blackie Davis, and me, only two people knew that I was beat up at lot nine. One was a babe because I told her so, and you were the other because you were listening outside the window when I told her. Oh, I don't know nothing. You don't know nothing, huh? What about this letter? How did you know that Joe Case had disappeared and why didn't you go to the cops with it instead of going to me with all this mumbo jumbo? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I got a lot of respect for my elders up to a certain point. But that point's fast being reached unless you start talking. If I tell you, will you promise not to tell Babe? Why shouldn't I tell the Babe? Because she'd kill me, that's why. Why do are you talking about? She'd... Oh, yes, you would. I know her better than you do. And how well do you know her? I was married to her once. You were what? I still am. I'm not Thorpe. My name's Sid Barlow. But you're supposed to be dead. Yeah. That's what the babe wanted everybody to believe, even Roy. See, after Roy was born, she had all she wanted from me. Roy was everything, and I was nothing or even less than that. So, finally, I just took off. Well, where have you been keeping yourself? Oh, everywhere. About three months ago, I hit town here. I was sick and I was broke, so... I went to the babe for... For a handout? Yeah. She gave me a little dough on this job. But on the condition that I'd never let Roy know who I really am. You know what that can do to a guy? Being around your own son and him thinking you're nothing but just another bum. Yeah, I think I know what it means. What can you tell me about this Joe case? Carl Pate and Blackie Davis took care of him. How do you know that? I heard Babe tell them to over on lot six. You heard that? Oh, no. Yeah, I went to pick up a car. I listened outside the office. And from what I heard, Case was asking for a bigger cut of dough from the Babe for the dough that she was getting from running them duplicate checks. Well, why didn't you go to the police? Because it'll be my neck if the babe finds out I'm the one that talked. That's babe now. You won't tell her, will you? You won't? No, no, that's all right. You go on outside and see what she wants. But don't tell her I'm here. What do you want now, Hammer? Another thing, babe. I think I've got everything I need. I've just been talking with Thorpe. Go out and wait in the car, Roy. I think you'd better stay here. Wait in the car. If he doesn't know what's going on, it's about time he found out. What are you talking about? Thorpe. Thorpe. Shut up, Mike. Your father. My father? Shut up! You mean Thorpe's my father? Exactly. Mike, I'll kill you for this. You've done just about all the killing you're gonna do, babe. What do you mean now? Thorpe told me that you had Carl Pate and Blackie Davis get rid of Joe Case. He's lying. Well, I've considered that possibility myself. He's lying, Mike. I tell you, he's lying. Oh, honey, he hates you so much he would say or do anything to get even. Why should he hate me? What? Well, babe, not being a man, I don't think you'd understand. But when a man loses his pride to another man, he can learn to live with it somehow. He can make excuses or justify it. But when he loses it to a woman, he's got to do something about it. 
Sid is nothing but a bum. He had to pay you back, and he knew how. Because he knew how far you'd go to shield Roy. To shield Roy? Roy! Thorpe overheard one of you tell Peyton Blackie to get rid of Joe Case. Only it wasn't you he overheard, babe. It was you! Me! You! You were running that claim check gimmick! I told you it was my idea. You were lying to protect your son. No, I wasn't. Oh, babe, stop kidding yourself, will you? Roy's a big boy now. He's too big to be protected and pampered and wet nursed. This isn't just a case of a kid robbing nickels and dimes from his mother's purse. He and his pal had their hands in your tilly. He was robbing you blind. Babe, now take it easy, honey. Come on, take it easy. What's the matter with you, babe? Can't you face reality? What are you going to do? Take Hammer out to Peyton Blackie. Before you give them 10,000 to leave town, they got one more job to do. No, Roy, no. Let go! No, you can't do this. I have to do it. Do you want to see me get the chair? No. Here. I got something to show you, Carl. Hammer, you and Blackie gotta get rid of him. Now, wait a minute. You want that ten grand? You stay. All right, Junior. Papa's gonna show you how it's done. Come on. Junior, you're getting to be a real big help. parking lot. Blackie told us they brought you here. I'll get the police. You killed him? Oh, you dirty, rotten, no good bomb. You killed him. Oh, my baby. You had a lot of help, babe. A lot of help. Thank you. 